Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is the ET122 Digital 2. Today's discussion is about analysis of synchronous counters. And let's say just someone throws this counter on your desk and says, what does it do? This is going to be very similar to a lab, which you may be getting soon. So this is my method of doing it, and it's a lot easier than how the lab says to do it. The reason why is just a little, simple, subtle trick here that I'm going to show you guys. It's basically allowing all exhaustive possible combinations of inputs. Your lab has you running around a little bit, and you may miss something. So here's how I recommend you do it. First off, we have this giant conglomeration of stuff here. We've got some two counters in there, excuse me, two JK flip-flops. Looks like they are hooked up in a synchronous manner. And it looks like rather than being in toggle mode, our J's and K's have logic hooked to them. Not only do they have logic hooked to them, they're dependent upon the present state of the counters, excuse me, of the JK flip-flops, Q0 and Q1. They're also dependent on an external input over here, E. Okay? So based on the present state, Q0 and Q1, and the external input, E, this counter can do, some, can do something. So this is what's known as a mealy machine. Basically, it's not only dependent on the present state, it's dependent upon the present state and the external input. Okay, so this is how you do it. And I'm going to save you guys the gory details, but basically determine J and K expressions. So step one. As complicated as this look, the only thing that those J and K things are going to do for those individual stages, they're going to allow it to stay, set it, reset it, or toggle it. So the J and K expressions for each stage if you've done your analysis correctly, it should look like something like this. Or, at least this is what I mean them to be. I may have messed up uh, the diagram, but here's what they should look like. And that is what those JK expressions should look like. And I've erased all the gory details because we've got the expressions, and I want to keep this up here. Basically, step two is we're going to go ahead and put these things into a table. All possible combos of inputs. So we're going to put in a table based off all possible combinations of inputs. What are our inputs? Well, remember, it's based off present state and an external input. So Q1, Q0, those are our present state. And here's our external input, E. And then what we want to do is determine the J and K inputs. Notice conspicuous space there. Space for each possible combination of inputs. So the lab that you have does not have this space. And I would like you to use this because it's going to make your life a lot easier. It's called an action column. So what you do, determine your present state and your external input. Just pick one. Determine what the J and K inputs for are, are for those combination of inputs. And on those J and K inputs, determine the action, whether it's stay, set, reset, or toggle. And then you can figure out what your next state is. Okay, so let's just pick a combination to begin with. Let's say we're at 0, 0, and the external input is 0. What do these expressions right here, what values do they have with that combination of inputs 0, 0, 0? So J0, that's the easiest one. That's 1. K0, well, it's not E and Q1, or E and not Q1. They look similar to an exclusive OR. An exclusive OR, it's high when it's different. So, exclusive OR 0, 0, 
it's going to be a zero. So J1, K1, not E or Q0. So E is a zero, so not E is a one, so we're already at a one. And a K1, that expression is not E and not Q0, or E and Q0. That looks a lot like an exclusive nor, if we remember right. That is, it's high when it's the same. Okay, so we're all zero, zero there, so that's going to be a high. So now, this is how I use the action column. Based on a 1 and a 1 for our J1, K1, what's our action? It's going to be a toggle. Based on 1, 0, what's our action? It's going to be a set. So, J1, K1 are going to toggle Q1. So 0 toggled is a 1. J0, K0, 1, 0 are going to set a 0, which is a 1. Our next state is a 1, 1. Okay, we can start drawing a state diagram in a 0, 0. And because we're 2-bit, we already know what the states would be. Looks like in mode 0, we're going to go that way. So external input 0 will go that way. So now what you do is just do this over and over and over and over and over again. And here's the trick. I know you just determined that your next state is 1, 1. I am urging you. I am urging you, even though the, the, the lab may have you do this. What is your next? Where do you start this analysis right here? Do not start it at 1, 1. Because this is my advice, all possible combinations of inputs. If you do 1, 1 right there, you may miss something. It may work, but it may not work. OK? So here's my advice to you. Do all possible combinations of inputs. All possible combinations of inputs look something like this, where you have all possible combinations of inputs, quite literally. You know that this represents as many states and external inputs as can be represented in this particular problem. So you've got all possible combinations. And now I'll perform those exact same analysis again. Based on our present state and our external inputs, what are our J and K values for each state? From those J and K values, determine what the action might be. And then from those actions, determine each stage's next state. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up to you to fill out, but if you've done it correctly, it should look something like this. So based on those J and K inputs, what are the actions? And if you do that correctly, it should look like this. So now, just go ahead and figure out based on those combinations there, those actions for each stage, what happens. So let's do it for this one. If we are setting stage one, which was a zero, so one, if we're setting stage Q zero, which was a one, it's a one. So here we go. We are in a case where looks like in stage, excuse me, in state present state zero one in mode zero, external input zero, looks like we're also transitioning to one one. So now we are going to toggle. It was a 1, so it's a 0. Now we're going to toggle. was a 0, 1. So it looks like in state 1, 0, present state 1, 0, we've gone to 0, 1 in mode 0. Now we are setting a 1, so that's a 1. We're toggling a 1, which is a 0. So from 1, 1, we've gone to 1, 0 in mode 0. So it looks like in mode 0, external input 0, we're going from 0, 0, a feed-in state to 1, 1, which is performing this let repetitive loop from 1, 1 to 1, 0 to 0, 1, back to 1, 1, ad infinitum. OK, now we've changed modes, it looks like. So we're still in present state 0, 0. We're here now. We're here at the top. 
But now, where do we go when external input is 1? So it looks like we're going to stay a 0 there. And it looks like we're going to toggle this 1. So it looks like we're going that direction. And what I'll do is I'm going to leave this up to you for some practice. You can pause the tape, because if you've done everything correctly, it looks going to look like this. And that's your next states. And so now all we do is just continue filling out our finite state diagram here. Basically, we've got to be their state machine diagram. So we were in, where were we? We went from 0, 0. In mode 1, we went to 0, 1. Now, let's say we're in 0, 1. It's mode 1. Where do we go to? 1, 0. We're in 1, 0, mode 1. External input 1. We go to 1, 1. Now we're in 1, 1, mode 1. We're doing a loop here. So I'm going to actually clarify that diagram a little bit better with some colors. So it looks like, let's say, when our external input is 0, we make that transition. This one, this one, this one. When our external input is 1, go from state 0, 0, to 0, 1, to 1, 0, to 1, 1, and back into that one loop there. Okay, So what's really neat about this is basically a mealy circuit here. It's dependent upon its present state and an external input. So let's say we were in mode E equals 0. We go from 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0. But let's say we suddenly switch to mode E equals 1. Where do we go from 1, 0? We go for, to 1, 1. And now we go to 0, 1. Now we switch back to mode E equals 0. We go to 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now go to mode 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so this is very similar to an up and down counter where an up and down counter's output is dependent on its present state and what mode it's in, up or down. Okay, so this is an analysis of synchronous counters that's going to be very similar to a lab that you're going to do. And my advice to you ignore this, ignore this next state, and do the all possible combinations of input and give yourself an action column for each stage to remind yourself what each stage does.